This mural tells the story of the arrival in Baracoa of the three caravels in Columbus's fleet, the Niña, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. You can see the process of colonization that we all know when the Indians came to welcome them with fruit. We still have that hospitality here in Baracoa. We are friendly people, and we get that characteristic from our Taino ancestors. Our people are direct descendants of that indigenous culture, you know. That's what this fresco is all about. We Cubans, we don't have many possessions, but we are happy. Happy with the little we have. That's what being Cuban means to me. Baracó is a charming little town which faces the rising sun. It probably owes its authenticity and easygoing outlook to the fact that, until the 1960s, it was cut off from the rest of the country by an imposing mountainous outcrop, making overland access impossible. The only way to reach Baracoa was by the sea. It was by the sea that one day in 1492, the Taino Amerindians gave a naively warm welcome to the ships of Christopher Columbus, who had sailed from Europe. It was from here in Baracoa that the Spanish slowly but surely changed the face of the island, starting with the grim fate of the indigenous people, who until then had lived on these lush coastlands and of whom almost no trace remains. Today, the memory of their bravery in the face of the invader is preserved as a legacy, since it so perfectly illustrates the image of the Cuban people's resistance. The slender carts of fruit, vegetables, and other staples that I see here and there are a kind of itinerant market. Positioned for a while in a shady street, they continue their door-to-door -door rounds, a very practical shopping arrangement for the inhabitants of Baracoa. When you walk around town, and it's the same everywhere in Cuba, you will notice there are two types of fresco. There are political murals, and then the more artistic murals that have been done by artists. The political paintings have been done by people we call rotulistas. They are artisan painters who carry out this work and who in turn receive a salary from the party or some other governmental organization. But the artistic murals are a whole different thing. One has a political message and the other is, let's say, more pleasantly artistic. These frescoes spiritually enrich those who see them. They also serve to educate the population. Because there are people who have little historical knowledge about their city, and thanks to what is conveyed in these murals, they learn a lot. This mural tells the story of the arrival in Baracoa of the three caravels in Columbus's fleet, the Niña, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. You can see the process of colonization that we all know when the Indians came to welcome them with fruit. We still have that hospitality here in Baracoa. We are friendly people, and we get that characteristic from our Taino ancestors. Our people are direct descendants of that indigenous culture, you know. That's what this fresco is all about. In Cuba, there are many people who feel very proud of being Cuban. A lot of people are proud to be Cuban. Being Cuban means having the notion of sacrifice, being courageous, and doing things with intelligence. Cuba 
Cubans are very well educated and our history has taught us a lot. We also have a great sense of solidarity and we like to help and give our love, do things with our heart. One thing I try to represent in my work is humility. We Cubans, we don't have many possessions, but we are happy, happy with the little we have. That's what being Cuban means to me. Back on the Malacan, as the seafront drive is known, the strange sight of some cocks dancing about catches my attention. For a Cuban, you might say that the cockerel is in the blood. You soon realize when you arrive in a neighborhood and you see someone with a handsome cock that they're really amazing animals. They immediately catch your attention. And then when you start to primp it up, plucking it and shaving it and training it for combat, that's nice already. You feed it well, keep it in a nice quiet spot, look after it well, and only after that do you take it to fight. We say taking it to the Colosseum. It takes two months of training. They are prepared by making them do exercises and taking in the sun. All that for at least two months. As you can see, they wear protection when they're training so they don't get injured. The cock learns the style and improves the accuracy of its blows. My grandfather used to do cockfighting. It was in a house in Guantanamo. There was a party for New Year and they took me along. I was little, but they took me along. I remember there was a white one and a brown one, almost black. The two of them fought and died, obviously. And then they went straight into the pot to be eaten, and it was a feast. Thank <laughs> you. 